Okay, you guys, this viral infection has turned into a bacterial infection. Um, I am now coughing up M-U-C-U-S, um, not to gross you guys out or anything. Anyway, I need to uh, talk about this before my mind just goes for the night or whatever. Um, so... MyRedBook.com Republican Felons, Stalkers, Sisters of Stalking, Assaulters, Sisters of Assaulting, Pimps, 422 PC, Death Threat, Makers, Foreigners of Perjury, Perjurers, Sisters of Perjury, Black Hat Hackers, Sisters of Black Hat Hacking, Cyber Stalkers, Bribers, blackmailers, extortionists, etc. Smitty Halibut or Mark Smith, who graduated from MyRedBook.com Republican Felonious Mountain View High School, 3535 Truman Avenue, Mountain View, California, 94040. And at George W. Herbert or George W. Herbert. On Twitter, in the past, have been talking to a woman from MyRedBook.com who calls herself Mistress Matisse, M-I-S-T-R-E-S-S-M-A-T-I-S-S-E, -S 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 -S. so I mean... It's not like they were hiding the fact that they were both on MyRedBook.com, you know, Mark Smith or Smitty Halbert and George W. Herbert. Um, and I'm not going to use all the big words or whatever, all the legal terms before using their names right now because I am sick. Um, and then Jeff Feinberg, the attorney or corrupt at Reddit head. On Twitter, he was on MyRedBook.com. That's not even a question. Um, that's at R-D-D-E-D-H-D, -D -D -E I believe, on Twitter. Then there was... What's his name in Milbray? Who raped me? Um... And then had, had me illegally tossed in jail in Redwood City or whatever. Um, I can't think of his name right now, which I guess that's my brain's way of protecting me. Um, that's what somebody once said to me. It's your, way, your brain's way of protecting you, and I think that is correct. Um, so anyway, the guy in Milbray... Um, who raped me, he, you know, had genital warts, um, and he tried to get rid of the genital warts with, uh, Dr. Scholes, and then his friend raped me, Anthony or whatever, um, they were both staying at the Millbury Best Western Inn, and Anthony from Georgia bought a Mustang vehicle, black using cash ten thousand dollars cash he paid ten thousand dollars cash and i was there to witness it not that i wanted to be there and not that i knew what was going to happen but he paid ten thousand dollars cash for that black mustang and that whole entire place the milbury best western or whatever el rancho inn was just cocaine central it was total cocaine central and of course, they wanted to keep me from talking. They wanted to intimidate me. So that's why the illegal charges were brought in Redwood City. Um, and yeah, so Anthony bought that black Mustang from a car dealer off duty or whatever, like after hours at about like a 10 at about 10 or 11 p.m. Um, on like a Friday or Saturday night. It was purchased with cash 
in a hotel room over there at the Millbrae Best Western El Rancho in Rick Zahensky. That's his name. Rick Zahensky. Rick Zahensky raped me. Um, I wish I could lie, but I'm just the world's worst liar. He did rape me, and so did Anthony. Um, and they were both on MyRedBook.com, just like George W. Herbert and Smitty Halibut or Mark Smith and Jeff Feinberg or at Redded Head. Um, and Rick Zahensky introduced me to two girls at the pool that at the Best Western El Rancho in um, that were escorts or courtesans on myredbook.com. One was African American or black, and one was white or Caucasian. Um, and I believe one of their names was Tara or Tara. Um, and then um, Rick Zahensky told me that the girls working at the front desk at the Best Western El Rancho Inn um, were escorts as well on the site myredbook.com and the people running that hotel or whatever were fully aware of it and hiring like escorts or courtesans, you know, to staff the entire hotel or whatever. Um, and then now, you know, I'm in this situation with these two ex-mafia members, Greg and Glenn Chapel, and definitely they were on myredbook.com for sure. Um, and, you know, along with everything else, their buddy David Jenkins or whatever, totally into meth, like I said before. I mean, it's just the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. I mean, Rick Sahensky and Anthony and the El Rancho Inn or whatever and Milbray. You know, there's just tons of cocaine there. Then you get to Glenn and Greg and meth. It makes total sense. It makes complete sense. And by the way, the real name of Mistress Matisse her real first name is Amy, according to a, an article I read about her. And there is something on the internet or World Wide Web or whatever you want to call it about her dating back to 1992. That date, as you all know, is significant to me because of the fact that, um, you know, I was in intensive care on June 8th, 1992 as a juvenile. And I was there for about five days, the same length of time that I was in the hospital for the broken femur. And it was criminally broken. That was to teach me a lesson, to teach me to shut up or whatever, to keep quiet. So anyway, um, yeah, I mean, the link between everybody here is myredbook.com. Link between them all is myredbook.com and the drugs, of course. Um, now, in terms of my broken arm, I will repeat the story, I guess. So, you know, Jeff and I were kind of having difficulties at one point, and I took off on my rollerblades um, down Delaware in San Mateo, and um, I got to the stoplight. I stopped literally at the stoplight, hung onto the pole for support while I was on my rollerblades, you know, waiting for the light to turn so I could cross the crosswalk. And the next thing I know, I'm in the middle of this intersection or whatever you want to call it. And, you know, I knew, I kind of knew at that point that my arm was broken and my elbow was broken. Um, but I was hoping it wasn't the case. And there was a guy that did stop, um, to ask if I was okay. He was driving a black Mercedes 
boxy vehicle, which I've linked to before on some of these computer websites or whatever. Um, so there was kind of a witness to all this, sort of. I mean, like, I don't know if he actually witnessed what happened to me, because I really don't know what happened to me that day. I can guess, though. Um, so once I got up from, you know, going splat in the middle of the intersection, like, like, and I don't know what happened to me. There was a guy on his bicycle um, at the stoplight with me, so he might have witnessed something, or he might have been involved in some way. But anyway, so once I got up, even with the broken elbow, I rollerbladed back from San Mateo to Burlingame, Burlingame to Clarendon um, in Burlingame. And I took the back streets. I took the back streets in San Mateo to Burlingame. And all the time as I was rollerblading down the back streets of San Mateo to Burlingame, there was a female cop in her vehicle that followed me all the way back to Burlingame, to Clarendon in Burlingame. She followed me all the way back while I rollerbladed. I don't know how she would have determined that I was hurt because it wasn't like I was, you know, trying, I was exhibiting any kind of, you know, I'm in pain kind of behavior at that point. I was literally just trying to keep my composure and I was trying to pretend like everything was fine and, you know, I was going to make it back in one piece and everything would be good. And, you know, I didn't have any outward appearance of being hurt as I rollerbladed back to Burlingame from San Mateo. Um, you know, once I got to Burlingame, back to Clarendon, um, you know, I did literally crawl into the apartment or whatever you want to call it. I crawled, you know, because at that point I was like, okay, I'm here. I can break down now. And, you know, the only person that's going to see me kind of breaking down is Jeff. And so I crawled into the apartment or whatever, literally. And then I made a beeline for the restroom um, where I proceeded to wash off my arms and stuff because I did have all kinds of uh, dirt and stuff all over my arms from whatever happened to me and being sprawled out in the middle of the intersection there. Um, and while I was like getting all that dirt and stuff off of me, the gravel, um, you know, I was starting to feel some pain. I was feeling pain, but it was more in my wrist at that point, I thought, and my hands and well, my left hand and my wrists, plural, I think, and washed everything off, went to sit down and watch some TV. And, you know, Jeff kind of picked up, or maybe it was more than just picking up, but he, you know, he asked me if I was okay and stuff. And I told him, we'll see, you know, in a couple hours, if this pain doesn't go away, I'm going to need to I'm going to need to go to the emergency room. And in a couple hours, the pain did not go away. And I did end up in the emergency room. Um, and I, back then, was the type of person who tried to play everything off and act like I wasn't in pain and that everything was hunky-dory. So I just basically acted like a clown in the emergency room. And that was just how I did things back then. And so eventually... Um, Jeff and I were in a room, in the emergency room, a patient room or whatever, and I was clowning around trying to pretend like everything was hunky-dory and I was fine. Um, you know, and I was telling jokes and, like, we were just joking back and forth and doctor walks by and is like you can tell he's like looking for the patient with the broken arm or the broken elbow. And I knew that my behavior was like, you know, not what is expected. So I stuck my head out of the little curtain or whatever. And I was like, are you looking for the person with the broken arm? And the doctor just stopped in his tracks at that point. And he goes, yeah. 
and he looks at me and he goes, are you the patient with the broken arm? I said, probably. And, you know, he gave, he asked me my name and my birth date and confirmed everything. And then, yeah, sure enough, it turns out that my elbow was broken. And I can only attribute that to probably my best guess, and I don't think I'm wrong, is that that police officer, in quotes, had something to do with breaking my arm. That's my best guess. And I don't think I'm wrong.